Robert Joanne Lonseth from Extend the Day. Welcome, Joanne. Thank you. Lovely and to I, be here. And you are the executive director and co-founder of the organization? Yes, correct. Tell us just generally, because for people who don't know what Extend the Day does. Um, so we, we provide small individual solar lights to children that don't have access to electricity, uh, mostly for you know education, for school, for studying, reading, um, the incredible damage that kerosene has on health um, and the amount of fires that are caused um, from burning fuel and, and you know fires within these little huts um, is, is over 1.8 million deaths a year from fires alone. That many? Yeah, it's insane, and and it's um, uh, you know living with a kerosene lantern has the equivalent health effects of smoking 40 cigarettes a day. So it's these little teeny kids, and you know when we talk to them, it's my eyes burn and they, and they tear up and I cry and I can't even read the book. You know, and it's, it's just absolutely heartbreaking. These kids have this passion and desire to learn. And, and you know, that's that's the future for them to break through poverty and, and really, you know, excel in their culture and in, in their community. Um, and they're being hindered just because they don't have clean, safe light. So so that's wow. our mission. I get excited. Can you yeah, tell? Yeah, <laughs> no, no that, that's fantastic. Where do you work? So we're based here in Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, we have projects all over. So, so we work with local organizations that are on the ground running, operating. Um, that helps us monitor the lights, that helps us um, you know, go and visit and, and watch the impact. Um, and so we have projects in Kenya, uh, Uganda, Namibia, uh, Bolivia, Myanmar, Nepal, uh, Bangladesh. Myanmar. Yes. Obviously that's a tough place right now. We just actually got back from the field, field visit last week. Um, we were down in the, uh, the Rohingya refugee camps um, in Bangladesh. Um, and then we were up in the northern parts of Myanmar with the IDP camps. Um, and it's, yeah, it's uh, probably the most desperate um, situation I've, I've ever witnessed. And, and we do, I, I personally go to um, uh, most of our most of our projects. I have really? not been to Bolivia or our Venuatu project yet, but um, all the other ones I have been. Well, help us live through you then. So when you go into a country and you go into a project and you say, I want to help bring you light for your children to read by and it won't kill you in a fire, how do you approach them? Um, we actually usually have the organizations come to us. So. Um, we kind of have two different sectors now. We we want to have a sustainable project wherever we go. We don't want to go drop off lights and then leave and, and well, I hope these work. Um, and so that's that's one of the main reasons we work with local organizations. Um, and how we find them is is usually through a connection. Um, we also have partnered with iLeap here in Seattle. Um, they bring in kind of world leaders of these small NGOs from around the world. And so we We've actually got a few, few of our um, projects are through those connections, um, and so it's it's all kind of um, you know word of mouth. Um, need need it, and they you know represent their need to us, um, and you know as, as long as it fits within our mission um, uh, or is doable or is trustworthy, then we we jump in and we can. Of all of the work that you've done, what's the most rewarding, personally rewarding project? do you think you've done? It's, um, it's interesting. So, so since being to the uh, Rohingya refugee camps, um, we really have two focuses now. Um, we have included that into our focus and, and actually running a campaign to try to send 10,000 lights to those camps. But that's as of you know three weeks ago. So that's a very new one. But I think the most... Um, beneficial, um, heartwarming, encouraging, you know, part of it is is one of our projects in Kenya we've been working with for about five years now. Um, and the first time I went there, and field visits are my favorite by far because I love meeting the kids, I love hearing the experiences, how they live, mm -hmm. what they eat. 
Um, and so on my very first visit, I met this little boy, um, and he uh, came to me, and he had been giving, given a light. Um, and they had had it for about, I think it was about six months, seven months um, by the time I'd gotten there. And he came to me and he said, he's like, my, my solar light broke. And these were our older versions, so our new versions are very good, but our older version. Um, and he said, I was able to take it apart and, and fix it. And he said, I did that with, you know, I started, I started doing that with a bunch of other small, you know, mechanical, you know, projects. Um, and his goal was, was then he found his passion and he wanted to go on and be an electrical engineer. So that was four years ago and he is now in high school um, with very good scores and on his way to become an electrical engineer and so it's you know it's, it's kind of the small side factors of these projects that are like wow we never thought that that would actually be you know an outcome to our mission um, but I think seeing seeing the kids sitting in their little teeny pitch black in the middle of the day huts um, you know, and, and these little huts usually have the, the, the kitchen in the corner, and so it's absolutely filled with smoke. And then they're sitting over this kerosene lantern. Um, and, you know, I, I sat over the kerosene lantern, and my eyes were watering, and I was coughing, and I could hardly breathe. It's just, um, it's heartbreaking. And so, and so seeing that, and, and one of our home visits in Kenya um, that had had the solar light for a while, um, couldn't even find their kerosene lantern. They put it away and they didn't use it anymore. Oh. And it just like, I just went and hugged the mom and I was like, you just, I mean, they're, the only thing we're doing is providing a tool, right? And it's them that actually implement it, that actually use it, and that make life-changing decisions for their children and their own health. And the focus of the conference here at Global Washington is on leadership, global leadership particularly. What I'm hearing from you is that you and your group that you co-founded is leading life, basically, life-saving opportunities and a future for children. Uh, how did you get into this? <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a long journey um, and one that I seem to keep having to you know, learn with each step that we take, but um, my dad and I founded it um, about eight years ago. Um, and it was always, we'd always been um, traveling to developing countries and um, and I just, I had a passion for, you know, experiencing the culture, experiencing how people live and I just, I loved kind of getting into other people's worlds. Um, and so one of the, you know, two of the things that I saw were huge issues, kind of global issues, were clean, safe water and clean, safe light. Um, and water I don't even know where to start to learn about water or how to make water clean um, but light I felt like we we could learn um, and kind of you know ex expand on that and so we um, we started taking solar panels apart and solar lights apart and learning how you know what components we needed and how small could we make it and um, how durable could we make it and uh, we you know we really found this niche working with local organizations for kids. Um, there's not much aid out there for that specific issue and so we, uh, yeah, we, we've seen some incredible impact and incredible outcomes but what's neat is we're not so much leading it but we're, we're giving the organizations on the ground the tools to be able to lead themselves you know, and, and the people that they work with. So. Sounds like leadership to me. <laughs> well, it, it, it's good to see you know, you, you have to stay culturally sensitive and it's incredible you see each different school even has a different culture right and so you know really watching how how we approach each each project um, in the leadership um, you know point of view is really important um, no, no, nobody wants people coming into their homes and saying you need to change this and you need to change that and so you know having that kind of um, intermediate between us and the children um, 
you know, through that local organization that they know and they trust, and you, most of them are from the villages they work in, um, has has really helped us lead, but through through people that know what they're doing on the ground. So. Joe, can you tell us what you bring in and how you do it? Um, so these are the solar lights that we use. Um, they have been engineered free of cost um, by one of our partners, oh, wow. um, one of our elite sponsors, AP Systems. And, um, and so everything inside is actually commercial grade, which gives you know the actual light really good sustainability in field. You know, we, we work with children, and children are pretty much the same around the world. Um, you know, they need to have toys and, and, you know, pieces of equipment that are, you know, durable for children. Um, and so we've had some really good success rate with, with these lights. Um, so there's the panel on the one side, so they're all individuals. Um, one huge, you know, help that this has is that when there's an issue with one light, it's super easy to replace. Um, you know, and, and instead of having a, you know, one big solar panel and you have to plug things in if something goes wrong with it, everything's down. So um, that's really beneficial. We just have the three LEDs logo and just one simple button. So they're for children. So you know, keeping them simple, keeping them easy to understand, um, was kind of one of our main goals. So a child can read a book uh, and or play at night instead of having to turn on the kerosene lamp. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and and we get them to you know to our projects um, by hand. We hand carry all of our lights to the last mile. To the last mile. Yeah, yeah. And if it's not us, it's our partners that are you know going. By Back to the projects to visit, but um, you know we we work in countries where uh, shipping is near impossible. Um, trusting. I mean, FedEx doesn't go there, huh? <laughs> FedEx does not get to our villages. No, not yet. We're you know we got to get get some work. So for people who are out there watching and they're saying, "Wow, I, I, I want to help," how can they do that? So there's um, a couple of different ways to help right now. We um, you know our original mission. We still have all of these projects going on. We, we see this substantial need with children and we will always have that focus. Um, right now after visiting uh, the Rohingya refugee camps in southern Bangladesh, um, we couldn't say no to, to their plea for help. It's unbelievable. Um, the, the absolute desperation that these people have for um, everything um, and, and you know they've, they've being scarred with um, murder and gang rape and uh, stories of little boys and little girls being murdered and stabbed to death next to their mom when their mom's getting raped. It's just, um, it's, it's unbelievable that that could actually happen. Um, in, in our day and age. And so we, we have started a campaign to, to send uh, 10,000 lights over to these camps. Uh, we have a partner who is working in the camps um, and, and so we, you know, we're going to be able to keep track of the lights. Um, um, but the, it's, it's, it's such a desperation um, that, that we, we are honored to, um, to divert our focus and, and include these camps as well um, so there's there's two different ways to do um, and and with our with our fundraising our admin costs are completely covered by one of our elite sponsors so everything that gets donated goes to buying lights and to the project solely so they are five dollars and that's at cost um, and so it's it's awesome that I can look people in the eye and say if you donate five dollars then there will be a family that will have a light um, um, and either myself or one of the team members hand delivers the light so I know they get there so it's it's um, we stay really lean um, but it's it's easy to stay lean when you see the increase of impact you know from from that so well, Joe thank you very much for being yeah. with us thank you very much for having me Rainmaker believes we can change the world